are ESPs for your grandkids? Pros, cons, should you do it? We're talking about it right now, stay tuned. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, portfolio manager here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group. The registered education savings plan account for grandchildren is something that not many people know you could actually do. Whole bunch of neat things you can do with that. It's not for everyone. There are pros, there are cons. We're gonna get right into the details of it. Right now, let me bring in none other than Adam Buss, wealth and estate planning specialist. Adam, thank you for being here today. Always a pleasure, Rob. Before we get to the RESP, remind you, press the red button and subscribe to our videos. If you're watching on YouTube, just subscribe, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you're watching, take a sec to like, share, tell us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to book a no obligation contest, consultation, go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd love to do that for you. The RESB. All right. In the old days, it used to be an account that I would open for my kids as the subscriber. I would open with my wife, joint subscriber. We would put money in there every year, $2,500 per child per year to get the maximum grant of $500. And I would do that over the course of 10, 15 years. I would max out the grant and there you go. Now with the advent of grandparents wanting to get involved a lot, lot more uh, in their kids. It's something we're seeing more and more now, right, Adam? Yeah, I see it all the time. I, I, I meet with people, do financial planning, talk about their goals and objectives. And often the grandparents are saying, you know, I want to help, you know, the grandkids with their future post-secondary education costs. And, you know, how can I do that? Should I put the money in trust? Should I give it to the parents? Should I put it in an RESP? What's the best way to do it? So let's talk about the, the big advantages. So why would someone start an RESP personally For my own grandkids, I don't have grandkids, but if I did, why would I start one for my grandkids instead of letting my kids do it for themselves? What are the pros? What are the benefits? The benefits are you got control of the money. You hand the kids a check. I mean, there's no guarantee the money is going towards the RESP. Obviously, that's the intention of the money. If you own it, you're in charge of the investments. You're seeing it grow. You're putting the money into there. If the kids don't or the grandkids don't go to school down the road, I mean, the money can come back to your pocket versus the parents' pocket if that's the case. So that's probably one of the big pros. I mean, anytime that anybody wants to set up fund, funding for education, I mean, it's fantastic. Whether it's the parents, the grandparents, a very nice uncle, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, I love seeing it. It's always nice to have somebody saving for the kids' future education. All right. So I set it up for my grandkids. I keep control. I am a trustee. Basically, I'm going to be able to pull out the money. I'm going to be able to decide who, which kid, how much they get, what years, when I pull it out. I can even decide what schooling qualifies for me. You effectively have full discretionary control over how the money comes out, how the money is invested and how much is going in. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You, so you have big. full control, which is great. Full- Now, the downside, you know, and I always say this is an important, very important part. I would always strongly advise any grandparent who's considering doing this to make sure they involve their kids in the discussion because there are some potential cons of setting it up, right? Some downsides. Well, there's only so much grant money and and contributions that can be made. So if the grandparents want to do it, the other set of grandparents want to do it, maybe the parents set one up as well. Only so much grant money is going to be put in under that grandchild's name from the government. So it's who's putting the money in first. Anything beyond that, you've maxed out your contributions and you're not getting any gov- government money. And you, there is a maximum you can contribute in your lifetime, right, as well. So there is. You know, you can't get all that grant. You can't. And then what could potentially happen is, you know, a few years down the line, your kids want to start their own RESP and they want control over the assets. They want control over the grant and they want control over who and when and how the kids are going to get the money, right? And that might be a point of discussion. So I would strongly advise that you have that discussion with your kids. Are you comfortable with us control care putting the money in and being trustee effectively on the way out or are we in a better position to give you our child a check you know if you have two kids we give you five grand and then we trust you our child to put that money into your own RESP for the kids. Because the other big con here, and you know, typically grandparents are going to be in their, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, potentially 70s. So now we get into a situation where, you know, what happens if they pass away? What happens if they lose mental capacity? Let's talk about that risk, Adam. Yeah. So, I mean, just reminding everybody, we're not lawyers. We can't give you legal advice, but these are certainly conversations that you should have with your lawyer and part of your advisory team. If you have an RESP and you don't name in your will, who's going to look after that? 
there, there is chances that it might not get dispersed quite how you intended it setting up as an RESP. So especially as grandparents, but even as parents, I mean, it's certainly something that you want to account for, but you want to make sure your will aligns with the rest of your goals. I think we said that throughout many of our videos is the best laid plans can be unraveled by not having all the documentation kind of working together towards that same common goal. Yeah, we've seen, I don't know how many, but we've certainly seen it a few times where we have an RESP coming over for another institution. The beneficiaries pro had not been properly coded. The will had been properly reflected for our grandparent who then passed away. And thank goodness we caught it before and we were able to actually adjust the beneficiaries, adjust the will to make sure that it was properly coded to kind of eliminate any doubt from who the successor beneficiary would be. And I know that there are cases every single year in Canada, it happens where the proper documentation is not done and RESPs effectively get closed out and a portion of the grant gets sent back to the government and a portion gets divided into an estate and it's just not efficient. And it's not what was intended use for the RESP, right? We want the kids and the grandkids to use that money for education, right? So just something to consider. So big, big uh, point to consider there is what happens in the case of, you know, instability, death or incapacity. And it's something to consider. So Adam, we talked about the pros, the advantages, we talked about the cons. Obviously, this is important for the plan. Anything else uh, top of mind that we should talk about for the RESPs? No, I think that's about it. We've, we've done some other great videos on the RESP programs as a whole. I mean, check them out. Some great information there. You know, best of all, discuss your goals and objectives with your financial planner, your advisor, so we can make sure that we're giving you the right advice and help and structure this to accomplish those goals for you. Well said, Adam. You're so articulate and so smart. If you'd like to book a new obligation consultation with us, myself or Adam, to talk about your planning, your investments, or anything else, please go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd love to take the time to book that with you. Again, guys, I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com. Take a sec to subscribe. Take a sec to like our videos. And again, thanking you for tuning in here today. 